Just looking at Duke and the numbers and everything, it looks like their their strength uh, is is on the boards. And so after having a tough showing against Clemson on Saturday, you know, in the paint, you know, how do you prepare for a matchup like that? Well, we have to be more physical than we were uh, last game. We have to gain rebound. We have to block out. Um, and we have to fight for position in the paint. Uh, we have to play post defense before they get it. And then we have to do a better job of keeping guards out of the paint. When you say more physical, is that <clears throat> difficult to do while also trying to stay out of the foul trouble that you guys are in? It is. It is. Um, you know, I've watched them some. Uh, they're not as physical as Clemson. They're big but they're not as physical. Uh, Young is, he's an older guy. Uh, so again, Clemson's the most physical team we've played all year. Jeff, you talked a lot about this season, about communication. Does the noise factor at Cameron Indoor make things a lot more difficult when it comes to communicating in a game like this? It will, their team will, they're talented, they're good, uh, but certainly that is a factor playing in the hostile environment. It'd be loud in there. It'll be an energetic crowd. I'm pretty sure their students are back. Um, it may be the first game that they're back uh, <clears throat> with, with school back in session. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be loud. So it's very, very important for us to communicate. In a way, do you anticipate this being, like, the most hostile environment you've played in so far this year? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great home court. Um, I thought Syracuse was tough, especially as they started making the run. I thought it was loud. It's bigger. That one's, you know, Cameron is smaller, and they're right on top of you. Um, so it probably will be so far. Jeff, some of the things that are kind of the staples of Duke basketball, defense, togetherness, toughness, the, the things that I guess that you try to instill here at Pitt, you're going to probably see some of those same things in this Duke program. How much do you feel like that's a – a, a matchup that these teams could be similar in terms of the mentality? Well, I, I, I think, you know, there probably are some similarities. Some of the terminology is probably the same. Um, <clears throat> you know, John and I both played for coach. Uh, so the things that, you know, we were taught that were instilled in us, they're, they're things that I think we probably both, you know, really believe in, um, you know, the way the game should be played and the team should be. Um, he had a lot of success as a player there. I had some success there as a player. We both worked there. And so, uh, you know, there will be some similarities, but there'll also be some differences. John has done a good job of putting his imprint on the program in the first year. Very difficult task, but you, you could see it. And I'd like to think that I've, <clears throat> you know, done some things, you know, my way as well here and in other places I've been. Jeff, uh, after the Virginia game, Tony was in here talking to me. He said, look, I'm, I'm happy for Jeff, and I, I don't know his guys that well, which I thought was sort of telling. Um, you know, I think you're starting five that night, had, had 88 starts combined at Pitt. He has Clark, who was making 120. I know that's with the portal, that's the nature of, you know, team building these days. you got to kind of – how have you been able to get this group to kind of do this so quickly, I guess, for lack of a better phrase? I mean, I, I think it's – I give all the credit to them. I mean, they've just come together. Um, you know, we didn't get together as a group, as a team, excuse me, until the start of <clears throat> the fall semester. We're normally together in July, but we had several guys that were not here for different reasons. And so the first time we were all together was the end of August. And so that's something that I worried about. But once we got together, it was pretty obvious, like right away that the pieces fit and I think with having some older guys and them uh, having a maturity about them and being all about winning, I, I think that helps. Uh, you know, when you go through some adversity or things, you know, like we, we, we went through earlier, you know, that, that helps. It can even make you or break you. And I think it's, it's helped us become closer. I think it helped us to understand how much we need each other. Um, and our guys have done a good job of, of continuing to grow in that manner throughout this part. You, you, mentioned the, you mentioned the maturity. There's been a couple times during your tenure, I remember very specifically after you guys beat Duke a couple years ago, Justin said, you know, we're back or whatever. But you have a lot of guys that have been around and played a lot of ball. Does that give you comfort or optimism that sort of the, the second half struggles that have popped up during your, when you've had these early conference play size or maybe you might be able to navigate them a little better? Doesn't give me comfort. I'm not comfort comfortable. I am optimistic. I'm hopeful. 
that, um, you know, all of us can learn from the past. You know, the guys, we don't have anyone that was on that team two years ago that you're talking about. We were four and one. Um, <clears throat> uh, but all of us have different experiences, you know, whether it's Greg from Marquette, Nelly at Colgate, you know, Blake's experiences at, at Ole Miss and at, and at Iowa State, um, you know, we all have experience, JB at, at, at Texas Tech and at Wichita, good and bad. You know, th th they've told me some stuff, you know, teams that they've been a part of that they've experienced and that they learned. And so the thing we talked about is bring all those, all those experiences with us, good and bad, and let's learn from them and let's try not to let that happen here. Jeff, is there any update on John at nope. all? Nope. So with with his situation continuing to go the way it is, is, is there an urgency on either end to try to get him back on the court or is just the focus on fixing the issue at hand? The, the, is? the focus is fixing, you know, making sure he's okay, making sure he's good uh, physically, mentally, and in a space with, you know, that, that, that he can play and help us. And this isn't injury related? No. Do, is there a chance we won't see him back for the rest of the year? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Coach Shire said today that he doesn't expect Jeremy Roach to play for them on Wednesday. Uh, what do they lose? What does he bring that they won't have, I guess, when he, if he doesn't play? Well, he's, um, <clears throat> he's a guy that played and played a lot, so it's experience. You know, uh, he, he's played in big games and big moments. He's a really good player. Um, but they have other really good players, talented players. They were able to go on the road and win at Boston College, which is which is hard. It's hard to win on the road in this league, and they did that. Um, other guys stepped up, but Jeremy's a talented young guy. Uh, obviously, he has experience um, and has played in big moments. He's got to play in the Final Four, started in the Final Four, for goodness sake. So he's a good player. What about <clears throat> Kyle Filipowski? Obviously a freshman, but he's a unique player, uh, you know, Categorized as a big a forward, but you know he's got guard like skills. What what does he bring to the yeah, team? Yeah, really talented, uh, great size, great energy, uh, plays with great spirit, competitive. It seems like watching him on tape. I saw him a lot in high school. Um, I should say in AAU. Uh, some you know have some familiarity with this game, but he's certainly gotten better since since uh, you know that summer on the circuit. Um, you know he can he can drive it. He can get it off the glass and push it. Uh, he's skilled. He can step out and make a shot. He can post. Um, he's a very unique player and a really talented young guy and uh, has, has gotten off to a good start for them. Jeff, what does JB mean to this team? Means a lot. I mean, he, he does a lot for us. He's, you know, older, leadership, uh, toughness, physicality, uh, intelligence, experienced, um, leadership. You know all of those things. He's 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 done a really good job of, uh, really in all those buckets for us. Is there a calmness or even keelness about him that that you hope rubs off on guys? Yeah, there's a maturity with him. I mean, he's he's a man, you know, and and he's he's experienced a lot. He's been through a lot, and he has a <clears throat> a quiet belief in himself, um, and he has a really. Uh, calm and stoic, but competitive demeanor. Um, and he's a guy that's about the right stuff. Jeff, one of your colleagues, <clears throat> excuse me, one of your colleagues said you took some guts to, to jump for this job when you did, you were given the state of where Pitt was. How much, when you, when you go back to Cameron, do you kind of, especially the way the state of the program is right now, given what you've experienced here the last few years, how much do you feel like, you know, you made the right move and, and it's like going back to where you started kind of can maybe give you a reminder like, okay, we're where we want to be or we're on the path of where we want to be. Well, I know I made the right move. Look, I knew when I took this, it was going to be a you know difficult task. I understood, you know, where the program was, you know, and there were a lot of factors with that. And it wasn't one thing. I know there was one thing that was blamed or one person that was blamed and that's not it. There were a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> You know, one person doesn't make a program, one person doesn't break a program. Um, and so I understood it. I understood it even more when I got here. You know, it's like you don't you don't know a place or you don't know a person until you're with them all the time. 
And when I got here, you, 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 you start to understand, you start to see. I think one of the biggest factors is that it was, it's, it's a new neighborhood. It was in a new neighborhood. You know, it wasn't the Big East, it was the ACC. When I took the job here, I was shocked. I mean, absolutely shocked that first month, first few months when I would talk to kids, talk to AAU coaches, talk to kids' parents, recruits. I mean, they had no idea Pitt was in the ACC. And this is not like national. This is like, you know, kind of, you know, Ohio kids or, you know, like neighboring states. Um, and so I knew it was going to be difficult. Um, you know, when I got here, it was the end of uh, almost the end of the school year. And so the recruiting cycle, it was as far as available guys. And so I understood that. Um, the job, you know, like when you look at it, in the four years prior to me coming of Pitt being in the ACC, I'm the third coach and Heather's the third AD. So there wasn't a lot of stability. After year two, the world changed with COVID. You play a season the next year where you have no fans. You go from March of 2020 to, Ju to July of 2021, where we can do no off-campus recruiting and we can't have people here. One of the first things I learned when I took this job <clears throat> after being here for a little bit is that we got to get kids on campus. Most people have never been to Pittsburgh. And so most people have an opinion of what they think Pittsburgh is. I know I did before I moved here. And it's nothing like I imagined it or thought it would be. Um, and so we had that period where we couldn't have anyone here. Once that was over with, the landscape of college athletics changed with one-time transfer. And then you introduce NIL. And so it's just all these things in a four-year period that happened, two of which three of which you, you, you didn't anticipate that made the job even more difficult. But I never questioned whether I made the right decision. I, I never I never did that. I felt like I made the right decision. I never had a dream job when I got into coaching. My dream was to coach in the ACC. I believed in this program. I knew the history of it. I believed in Heather and Chancellor Gallagher. Uh, but most importantly, or just as important, I should say, I believed in me and what we could do. And it's been hard. It's been difficult. It's, it's been a lot of setbacks. It's been a lot of that, but we're still here. We're, we're still swinging and uh, we're trying to get better each day and we're fighting. And I, I really like the group of guys that we have. I like the really like the three young men that we've signed and um, really look forward to, you know, our future. Jeff, Jeff you mentioned the not having, not being able to have the, the team as a whole together till August or whatever. Did you do anything out of the ordinary to sort of accelerate the team building because there was a shorter window between you can get them together to the start of the season? I didn't do anything out of the ordinary, but we did some things that we weren't able to do because of COVID, you know, in, in the past, like in, in, the, in that two year period, there are things that, you know, you do to try to organically help the team building process. You know, for a year or a little bit over a year, we couldn't do those things um, because of COVID. You know, so the, the the only thing we did different from years past when we were able to do those things is, you know, we had a few more like team building meetings. You know, we we one of the guys on my staff came up with the concept of of kind of having these meetings based on like words and really just bringing something up having the guys, they would send in a picture of, you know, one of their favorite moments of their life. And then we'd all get together and the picture would flash up on the screen. And then the guy would get up, you know, two, three minutes and talk about that moment. And so it was a way for us to get to know each other, them to get to know, to see someone besides just as a teammate or a basketball player. Um, that's really it. I mean, we took a trip to DC, but we did that my first year. We did another trip somewhere, I think my second year. Um, the last two years, we weren't able to do anything because of COVID. And so, that I mean, that's really it. Given the nature, because of the portal, because there's so much movement, is that stuff even maybe more vital to try to get guys to play for each other? Yeah, I mean, that, 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 I mean that's all we've talked about. Now, we've talked about it in the past, too. <laughs> um, but it seems to have resonated with this group of guys. 
Um, and we've done that. I mean, we've we've done that. You know, we got punched in the mouth early, and we lost those three games in a row, but we never wavered. We, we kept fighting, we stuck together, and we've gotten better. Um, you know, we need to respond to a loss now. You know, the last time we had a loss was Vanderbilt. We, we responded. Hopefully we get off the mat this time, and certainly the opponent is different. We won't be at home. It's, 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 it's no disrespect to, you know, the opponent we played after Vanderbilt, and I wish them luck, but this is different. We're going to play at Duke, you know, one of the, you know, most tradition-laden programs and best programs in college athletics. And so, you know, it's a big-time opportunity for us. When you have three days to, so to speak, stew over a loss, how do you transition into next prep? Is it immediately forget about it? Is it kind of take the time to learn from that loss? You know, how do you go about in that process? Well, what we do as a team, we were off yesterday uh, because you got to, per NCAA rules, you give a day off. And then um, we got back together today. And what we always do, we get feedback from the last game. And we talk about it. We see some good that we did. We talk about what we can get better with, uh, some teaching points. And then once that's over with, we flush it. It's over with. And then we move on. We move on with our preparation for the next game. And so that's what we did. Duke is one of the better rebounding teams in the ACC. I think they lead in offensive rebounds. Um, when it comes to the style and preparing for a team like that that can crash the glass, is there a challenge to maybe adjusting your own style, maybe some of what the players might be able to do in their own tendencies in order to combat that? No, we're going to be us. You know, no, we got to rebound. I mean, we have to do that. We, we have to block out. You know, they have two guys, Filipowski and Young, I think have 90 offensive rebounds between both of them. That's a lot. <laughs> um, but the other, Mitchell, you know, uh, uh, Lively. You know, they, I mean, they're they're big, they're long, they're athletic, um, and so we have to, you know, do a good job with being physical and and blocking out. And then we have to gain rebounds. Like we can't, you know, our guards are going to have to stick their nose in there and and get some rebounds. Jeff, when you talk about flushing a loss, do you think having a mature group helps that? You know? I hope so. I mean, it, it's. I hope so. And I hope so. Would you say maturity is the biggest difference between this group and ones you've had in the past? I know you don't like looking and comparing too much, but this has to be your most mature group you've had here. Right? Yeah, it is. It's the most, definitely the most mature. We're older. Um, I think we have more depth, more quality depth, uh, you know, than we've had in the past. Uh, but definitely maturity. You mentioned the 2023 class that you guys brought in for the future. They all got to come to the game this weekend at Clemson. What was that like for you to see them all in the building for a pit basketball game for the first time? It was great. It was awesome. I mean, you know, for them to, especially for them to be here with a crowd like that and the energy back in the building, um, <clears throat> it, 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 it was awesome to have them, got to spend some time with them and their families after the game and talk to them. I think it was really good for them to see like in person, like how physical this league is, and to see how how hard you have to play, and and you know all three of those young guys are are talented, and I think they have big upside, and I think they have a chance to be really really good players, uh, but you know they have to understand it's a process, and I don't think any of the three are afraid of the process. I think they look forward to it and look forward to the work that it's going to take uh, to become the players that we know they want to be. Jeff, you, you mentioned that you never had a dream job, but you and John were both assistants under K, and there was a lot of speculation as he neared retirement. Who would be the guy that would succeed him? And, you know, Chris Collins and Woj and Hurley, you know, all these guys that were head coaches. How much did your belief in yourself allow you to step, step outside and say, I'm going to go pursue the pit job as opposed to waiting to see if you'd be the next Duke coach. I mean, how much of that was, you know, what you said about you believing, believing in yourself, that you're like, hey, I'm going to go and pursue this job and, and not wait for somebody to tell me when I'm ready or whatever. I never had thoughts of being the next Duke coach. When I was there, I never thought about it. I mean, I tried to be the best assistant coach I could for coach and for the program. I understood my role. I was never caught up in titles. I remember when coach asked me to come back there, and he said, you know, Wojo and Chris are the both associate head coach. I can't name you that. And I was like, look, I don't, I don't care. We're all assistant coaches. Like, it doesn't matter to me. I don't know if that was because I'd already been a head coach for nine years, but I've never been caught up in that. And when I was there, I never had visions, never thought once about 
being the next coach there. I tried to be the best assistant coach I could for him and for the program and for the guys in the program. I tried to serve them. Um, I had opportunities during the seven years I was there, you know, at different places. And I looked, I mean, there were a couple that I actually talked to, interviewed for. Um, there were three in particular that I, you know, kind of got down the road with, but just in the end, I didn't feel like it was right for me and my family. And all three of them, coach was involved with them. I mean, he was someone that I leaned on and I talked to about it. Um, it had just, you know, it, when, when this opportunity presented itself, you know, it, it, it was different because it was the ACC. That that was the difference. It was the ACC. It's it's it's. I'd always dreamed about coaching in this league, and I understood after being in this profession that it was never going to happen at a traditional ACC school because I was a Duke guy. So it wasn't going to happen at the at the you know teams that were. Always, you know, the Virginia, you know, all those, it wasn't going to happen. Virginia, Wade, wow. NC State, you know, all those schools, certainly not Carolina, but, <laughs> you know, any of those schools. So I understood that. Um, and so when this job opened and they called and they, you know, came after me, it was, that was the attraction. And then the more I learned about it, you know, I felt like this was, this, this was the opportunity. Can I, can I follow up on that? Because you mentioned about you didn't, what, you know, what Pitt was versus what you thought it was. Can you give us an idea of what perception versus reality was when you got here? Well, I mean, it's, it's I mean, you, what I mean by that is I had been here as a visiting coach. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought the Pete was very, very nice. What was a really good home court advantage and a really nice arena. It actually had probably one of the best visiting locker rooms in the ACC. So I just anticipated and thought that all the other stuff would be like that. What I mean, I call I, I called it the underbelly when I got here. So the players' locker room and lounge, you know, a film room. I mean, just all of those things, the practice gym. I had never seen any, seen any of that stuff. And when I had the press conference and I walked around and I saw those things, they were not up to par of what it, it takes in this league. I mean, they just weren't. Um, there was a locker room, and I guess you'd call it a player lounge. Um, we didn't have a film room. You know, the the practice facility, it was just, I called it like an auxiliary gym. It was just the gym. The, the, the lead up to it was not good. Like, the you know, the as you're walking up to it, 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 it was not appealing to the eye. Um, it, it just didn't have those things. You know, I understood the year before, you know, of them being 0 and 18, 0 and 19, if you count the ACC tournament game, the margin of victory. So I understood, and again, I don't, I say this, and it's not a knock on anyone, but I, I understood that we had to improve the talent level. Like, I understood that. I didn't know that, be, you know, being in a new neighborhood, like, I didn't know the effect of that. I didn't realize that, you know, it had been three coaches in four years. I, I was the third coach in four years, or, Heather was the third athletic director. So I didn't under, I didn't realize like the that instability. I didn't realize, you know, how important it would be to be able to get people on campus because of the perception that probably people had of Pittsburgh. You know, whether right or wrong, that's the reality of it. I I, I would say about ninety eight percent of the kids we brought in for visits since I've been here. At some point during the official visit, the kid and or their parents say, this is nothing like I thought it would be. And they're not talking just about the university, they're talking about the city, because it's a really, really cool city. And I love being able to show people around. But you don't know that, you know, unless you're here. That's what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. And it's nothing like that. And so that's what I mean, just like the, you know, I knew the basketball program. I knew the old Big East days. I knew the, you know, DeWan Blairs and the Carl Krausers and the Brandon Knights and the, you know, like like that crew. Like I knew that. I knew the Charles Smiths in the 80s. And like, I knew that. I knew the history. I knew that every year when you'd get, whether it was the Street and Smith magazine or 
ESPN used to do a magazine with college basketball or when Sports Illustrated used to do it and all these Lind all these things, there would be a thing in there of like the top home courts. This was one of them. The top student sections. This was always in the top five in both. Like I knew that. So I knew the history and the tradition and the championships. And this was one of the hardest places to play. And teams didn't really come in here and win. And I knew all of that. So that's what appealed to me because I knew it was there. So I, I thought it could it could get, we could get, like, like it could, if it's been there, you can get it back. I, I didn't fully grasp how difficult that was. And then especially, and again, it's not an excuse, it's an explanation. When you throw those other things in of, a global pandemic, name, image, and likeness, one-time transfer, all within a three-year period. That, that that makes things a little bit more difficult. Jeff, I, um, you mentioned some of the blue bloods when you were talking about, I know I couldn't get a job here, I couldn't get a job there because I'm a Duke guy. When you look at the standings right now, I understand it's January 9th. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, but it's Clemson, it's you guys, it's a couple other, it's, it's non-traditional, at least in terms of being in the ACC powers. Is that, I mean, it, it seems like there's, the league's not as top-heavy maybe as it maybe typically is do you is that something that the coaches view as well that maybe there's a little more is a little more wide open than it has I, been? I, I just think it's the nature of college basketball now I think the, the landscape of college basketball I know college athletics but college basketball ship has changed there's a lot more parity than it used to be um you know, you got some teams that are older. You have some older guys. You you have some teams that have been able to go out in the portal and get some guys that have been, you know, able to come in and really help them and, and things like that. You know, some of these, you know, quote unquote, blue blood programs, they're, you know, still relying on freshmen and talented freshmen. But if you can get old and, 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 and have some experience, that's a little bit different. You know, I, I don't, unless you're, Zion or RJ Barrett or Paolo or whatever, you know, an 18 year old and a 22 year old, like that's a big difference. Um, and so I, I just think there's more parity in college basketball period around you know, from top to bottom. And when you're pitching guys, when you're talking to guys that are in, in the portal thinking about coming here, that is that the pitch? We can do this quickly if we, no, if we get the right group together. Yeah, I mean, I, we just talked about man opportunity opportunity to play, opportunity to be good, opportunity to do something special, to rebuild something, you know, to get, you know, the the, the university, the, the, the students, the city, you know, back behind this program, how it once was. Like, that's what we talked about. We, we talked about how I thought, we, you know, we could be good and if we get the right pieces and we fit and we're about the right stuff, we could do that with the guys that we have coming back. You know, we thought it would be a big, you know, like a good mix and, you know, we can, we can, we can, you know, make our way in the league. So we did talk about that. Thanks, Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it.